Guys, guyettes, today we are carrying on with the T5 Transporter build series. We're looking at the doors, they're full of dents. We need to make them look a bit prettier. We need to make it look show worthy. Let's get straight into it, are you? So, as I was saying, T5 build series, if you haven't seen any videos on that, there's loads on the channel. Go onto the channel, look for playlists, T5 build series, there's loads. We're on the paintwork and today we're on the doors. The doors have got a few dents in. They're not too bad, they're little dents. Sometimes little dents are even harder to repair than big ones. I'll explain more. Anyway, we had to bare metal from the bottom up to the swage line. It is covered in stone chips. I'll show you in a minute. Covered in stone chips and they've grown into rust patches. Not rust patches that are concerning that the door's gonna fall in half, we're gonna have to start welding it up. But if we didn't save them now, they might have actually turned into that. They're little chips, little rust patches, a few dents. There's a few ways you can repair dents. And today I'm gonna tackle a few of them. There's obviously more than one way to skin a cat. So if there's other methods out there, so be it. This is just my take on it and how I apply dents and filler, etc. There's a couple of little dents, there's a couple of little chips. Well, there's loads. Let me show you. First of all, I'm absolutely tucked in the corner. We've got a little bit of space in my pal's workshop. He's kind enough to let me use a bit of room, so I don't mind being tucked in the corner, but it's a bit tight on space. Bigger than my workshop, so I'm not gonna complain. We've got the door precariously on a box because I've run out of panel stands. I've brought one down and I don't want to use any of his because he's a busy body shop. So we've got one door on a box, one door on the stand, and I've already started to bare metal this door. There's chips, or there was chips, all the way along it. There's a few little dents in it. You can see there was a dent there, dent there. Going to put a little skim on them, but there is a bigger dent in this door. If I go at a angle, we should be able to see it. There it is, right there. Couple of dents. Now, they're only small dents. They look small until you sand them off. Those dents are probably about yay size. I'm gonna apply filler that size just to make sure we get them. Uh, I believe there's another one there. You can see there. Anyway, I've rubbed out all the rust marks. You can see the old rust spots. They were blown out. I've rubbed them all out and I've feathered the rest of the paint in. I don't need to bare metal the rest of the door. The sides were worse. It was literally, <laughs> there was only about eight to 10 in this. So I'm gonna leave as much paint on as possible to make it easier, obviously, but I don't wanna to have to do it again. So I've sanded all of them out and then blended them out or feathered out the edge. Cause if you've got a chip here and you literally stopped there where you're sanding, there'd be a transition between bare metal to 1.5 mil of paint and you'd you'd see that. So I have feathered out all the chips and I've taped up my swage line and I'm only gonna sand up to it and hopefully prime up to near it. That way I haven't got a F about blocking and straightening the line. Cause if we don't touch it, it's still gonna be mint. Let's have a look at the other door. Now this door is actually a tiny bit worse and you can see, oh, that was a little dent there. Did we see that? Oh yeah, little dent. You can see all the little chips. There is loads of them. And they go halfway up the door. Another one. And once you start sanding it down, you'll see a little black spot. Then you'll break through that. Then you'll break through the primer. And then another one will appear. So you do have to sand all of it to uncover them all. They'll go quite far up the door. But luckily, they don't go past the swage line. I take it as stone chips. And then 18 years of life of the van living outside, they've just grown into a little bit of rust. So you can't really blame them. But we have got a couple of dents in this door, right on the swage line. Can I get them? There you go. About there, there's a handful of them. Not the best lighting, so hopefully you can pick them out. So I need to do a skimmer filler over there. And then there is some dents here. There's one. Where can I get them? There he is. There's a, a few around there, but I'm gonna bare metal those. 
so we're not going to filler those until it's bare metal i need to get some more of this off i need to uh the thing you do first of all is obviously sand down you can't just put filler straight over shiny paint because it won't lay down nice it has a it might even pop off it might break off it might crack so you need to sand the area first where you're going to apply the filler i'm going to use 320 and that's going to knock the head right off it and then i'm going to skim it and i'm going to try my best to block the filler out without rubbing through the paint around it because what you'll find is if you lay your filler on too thick as you're rubbing it out you'll then rub through the paint all the way around the filler that then leaves a little a little divot then you've got to skim over that again so it is quite hard to knock out little dents without making more work i am going to get the filler out let's apply some filler to this one and let's move on to the other door <clears throat> I have already keyed this up, as you can see, it's bare metal in most places, but you, as I mentioned in the last shot, you would definitely key this up. Do not apply filler to shiny paint. Rub it down, key it up with anything, um, 320, 500, just make sure everywhere the filler's gonna go isn't shiny. Then you can assess how big the dent is, and to assess it by hand, is it takes a bit of skill, I won't lie, and it takes a bit of practice. Rubbing your whole hand along it, we're not rubbing our fingertips along it, we've got a whole hand flat, and you're gonna feel it with your fingertips, your paws, and your palm. I'm rubbing backwards and forwards along it, and a massive tip that I was taught when I was first learning, look away from the panel. Because if I'm looking right at it, I can feel it, but, if you're unsure whether it's a high spot or a low spot, look away and it literally amplifies your feeling. You'd be surprised. Go and rub one of your dents outside after the video. Let's not, let's not skip the video. After the video, you've got a dent on your motor. Go outside, look at it whilst running, your hand back and forward, and then look away. It is massively amplified. Now, this is borderline needing pulling out. I know you're thinking, core, it's quite a small dent, but it's about... Hmm, it's in there. It's a few mil in. Now, you normally, or most of the time, you need to get your metal as straight as possible. The reason being, the straighter you get your metal, i.e. hammering it out, pushing it out, the straighter you get the metal, the less filler you have to put in, the less filler you have to put in, the less rubbing down you have to do. The less rubbing down you have to do, the less primer. The less primer, the less you have to rub the primer down. The less primer you have to rub the down, nearly couldn't say it, the less paint you have to put over it. So it all starts at the very beginning. Get your metal very straight. And that is quite deep. This has got bolt-on panels, T5 transporter, it's got bolt-on metal panels underneath, so I can't get access too easy. I could bare metal it and use the ding puller. And if you're not very good at feeling dents, get a straight edge, a straight ruler. Oh, it's only about a one mil. I can get that with filler. But what normally happens, as the dent goes in and the metal goes in, it makes the outside bulge out. So you'll never get it perfect until you straighten the metal. But I think because I've heavily sanded around it, the high spot is low. Well, it's not low, but it's level. I'm just gonna fill that, it'll be fine. Um, you can see, hopefully you can see from there, the dents look really small, but the dent, is at least that big. I'm gonna apply filler even bigger than that. And because it's quite dipped, you might need to do it in two skims. And that is when feeling the panel, once you've put filler in, rubbed it down, feel it again, that's when the skill comes in to know whether you need to take more filler out or apply more. Let me get the mixer, uh, the mixing board and the filler. Let's knock this up. 
so we have got an onion board also called an optima mixing board very good loads of sheets of paper knock your filler up peel the paper off fresh sheet underneath bit more advanced than it used to be using bits of cardboard i have got some filler and some hardener I haven't mixed it yet and a lot of people ask me how much hardener per filler well i remember when i was learning back in the day with the little tins it says on the back a golf ball size to a pea now in the winter it will harden slower than it will in the summer if you've ever done filler work in the summer your filler can go off before you've even got it in and applied so you can put a little less hardener that is probably a skosh too much but it is freezing outside and it's been raining all day literally all day from the minute i got up till now eight nine o'clock at night still raining now i'm just mixing it together i'm flattening it into each other quite hard to explain i'm just mixing it and it's changed a nice color if it goes too pink there's probably a bit much in there but don't panic too much is not a worry it's when there's not enough in it then it doesn't go off that's a right pain i'm happy with how much that is mixed <clears throat> there's an art to applying filler i'm no bodywork expert i've just done it a bit but there is people out there who can make their filler look absolutely mint and the key to getting good filler or making it easy to rub down is by practice and getting your filler in nicely the nicer you can get your filler in the easier it is to rub out and the easier it is to rub out less primer less rubbing down you know the drill just mentioned it now it's hard to not play with it too much because you end up playing with it too much you end up taking it out and now because I'm doing it on camera I'm trying to make it as good as possible but I'm going to end up taking too much out I'm not doing any more what you'll see is going on here there is absolutely no step around the edge of my filler have you ever seen someone put filler in it? it's just like it's like that it's got a full thick edge all around it well that is extremely hard to rub out this filler here you can see there's no edge to it yes it looks a bit liney where I've been scooping it about but around the edges there's no lip I want it smooth so when I start to rub it I haven't got to rub furiously on the edges because when you rub around the edges like I mentioned in a previous shot you end up rubbing the paint out and then rubbing a divot around the outside and then you have to skim your filler even bigger then you do it again you skim your filler even bigger so the better you can get your filler now the easier it is to rub out the easier every process is um, that might not get it i can just see a little divot in it but it was quite a deep dent um, i'm going to heat gun this it's cold it's winter we need to hurry up we haven't got all day i'm going to heat gun it ever so slightly just to warm it up that take about 10 minutes to go off we'll knock it down and uh, see how it comes out and we're gonna have a look at the dents on the swage line on that door um, yeah and it's easy to always mix too much filler up it's better to have too much filler than not enough because if we go to skim this dent and you run out of filler well there ain't enough in there it's better to have some left than not enough for your dent so it's been about 20 minutes I warmed it up with a heat gun I didn't cook it I just lightly warmed it up with a heat gun now filler dust isn't very nice so if you haven't got a hoover uh, a dust extractor for your rubbing down for your fillers make sure you wear a mask filler dust isn't very nice old paint isn't very nice do it in a doorway do it outside that way it can blow into the atmosphere I've got a hoover we're all good it's gone it's gone nice and hard and as I say because we haven't got an edge it's not going to be too hard to rub out I've got 120 grit on the block don't go in with something smooth like 240 or 320 because you're just going to make a mess you wouldn't if you was a chippy you wouldn't use a blunt chisel because a blunt chisel would make more mess than a sharp one and that's the same with rubbing down filler 
if you had a load of filler and you had steps around the outside, you'd go in with an 80 grit first. But as this is small, I'm using the small block and the 120. And I'm gonna lightly go over the top. I'm keeping my, my strokes relatively small because it's only a small dent. And you might see on other channels they do diagonals like so. Completely correct. You can give it forwards and backwards, up and downs. And what we're trying to do is just smooth it off. So I'm going to smooth the filler off first, i.e. all the bumpy bits from where I'm not very good at applying filler. And then I'm going to work over the whole lot. And every 15, 20 seconds, I'm just going to feel it. Because if you're a bit of a novice, it's easy to rub too much out. And then you've got to apply more. But you're not alone. I used to do it. It takes practice. I'm not pushing hard at all. I'm lightly skimming over the top. I might speed this up a little bit. I might not. Because I've got it in nice around the edges, it's literally rubbing out really easy. I do believe I need to put a bit more in just by looking at it. But not yet. You can obviously change a few different directions and you'd feel so that is absolutely perfect along there. But it's low in the middle. I don't know if the GoPro will see it. You might be able to see it. It's low in the middle. And that's because it was quite a large den. I know it didn't look that large, but it was quite deep. If this was Instagram or a Facebook reel, you would have spent four hours hammering and dollying that straight just to put a wafer bit of filler in. But this ain't. This is real life. And it's taken that long to knock that down. It is still low. I've ever so slightly started to scratch through up here and that's because I'd already DA'd the panel heavily. If I'd have only knocked it off with 320, 500 just to key it up, I wouldn't have gone through there already but that doesn't matter. I need to apply a bit more filler. If anyone's wondering what filler I use, for little thin dents, we've got U-Pole Fantastic Body Filler. Really good, light, lightweight stuff. It's for small dents, easy to rub out, really nice. If your dent is a little bit deeper, a little bit bigger, we've got the U-Pole Smooth 7. This is a lot of a, this is a tougher filler, harder to rub down, but it's, it's nice, it's a really good filler. If your dent's really big, and you can't pop it out anywhere, like I say, try and get your metal work as good as possible, but if you can't, and you're just gonna get some gear in there, you would use a fiberglass first. Fiberglass, get it in there, knock that off, then some U-Pole Smooth 7, and to finesse it, you can use the Fantastic Filler. I see uh, some bodywork guys, especially in American videos, they use a glazing putty, it's like a liquid and you like pour it on and it self levels but uh, I've tried using it and I didn't get on with it. Anyway, I'm going to knock this up, skim this and what you'll find is, just quickly, if you're repairing a dent, your first skim of filler will look a bit mediocre. If your filler works not that good, my filler works not the best, I can get filler in where I need it to but it's not as pretty as what it can look. Your first bit won't look that pretty. Your second bit will look a lot nicer and that's because it's flatter. So again, if you can get your metal work flat, your filler goes in nicer and the easier your filler goes in and the better it looks, the easier it is to rub out. So hopefully this one will look a bit better and I'm just gonna go a bit bigger with this one because even though they were small dents, 
it's surprising how far they went. I'm not pushing hard, but what I'm starting to do is pull all the filler down to here. Some other guy I watched said never change direction because you pull air bubbles. Well, I want to now pull the filler back up the panel. I'm happy with that. Still not Mona Lisa flat. I always get little stroke marks in my filler, but I know the filler's in the right place. I'm gonna heat gun this off, and uh, I'll show you again a little bit of knocking it off. And that should be it on this one. And we can move on to the other door. It's getting late. So while waiting for the filler to go off, I did DA some more bare metal of the door. And then once this is rubbed down with 120, I will then block over it with 240, 320 because I want my filler to be finished in 320. That way when we prime it, all the primer isn't going to sink into the prep marks. Then when you paint it, all your paint will then sink, sink into those prep marks. So I like to finish my filler in 320. I won't bore you with rubbing this all down, unless it takes me 60 seconds like the first bit, which I doubt it will. I am still using the small block. It is just on the cusp of needing a big block or a small block. But we've got a fresh 120 on the block, so we might as well use it. Working over the edges every now and again whilst trying to sort my imperfections out. So a little bit of imperfection. Then I'm rubbing over an edge. Then up there. A bit of that edge. I've got the block nice and flat against the panel. These hoovers are absolutely brilliant. I haven't got one. I have to use a mask and stuff and keep doing it outside. So the hoovers, dust extractors, they are really expensive. I'd like to have one any companies out there want me to showcase a, a dust extractor hit me up now i'm going to lightly block over the whole lot backwards and forwards that is damn near perfect because i'd already sanded through because I'd already sanded through, you can see a bit of a shape going on here. And I can ever so slightly feel there's still too much filler in it. But where I've rubbed it out nicely, I haven't broke through around the outside. That is nice. I'm going to tickle it a little bit more with the 120. Then I'm going to 240 it and 320 it with the same block. And then I'm going to DA over the whole lot with 240, 320, just to smooth it all off so it's a nice smooth surface for primer. I do have a couple of other dents I'll attend to, but I'll skip to that. Oh yeah, done with the dent. And believe it or not, I actually had to put another skim over that because in the last shot I showed this little bit. Well, I needed a little bit of filler here. And rather than just add a little bit of filler here, you add a big piece over the whole lot. So those tiny little dents at the start have turned into a bit of filler that big that was applied that big. I did mention, I think I mentioned that they wanted pulling out ideally. I have got them, but ideally they wanted pulling out. There's gonna be bodywork guys at home saying that tiny little dent took you three skims. One, two, four, three, you get the idea. Yes. It did take me three skims. A little bit embarrassing because a real bodywork guy, they would have loaded that up with thick filler and got it in one. But I was trying to apply it nicely and gently. And I'm glad it took three fillers and I'm happy to show you guys because some of you guys are not more novice than I am. I know a bit, but some of you guys know even less. And you might have to do the same. 
three coats or three skims that took, I did fix the other dents. Very light little bits, they were very small. I then blocked it all over with uh, 180 and then I've just gone over the whole panel with 240 and that is feathering out the transition between paints to bare metal to filler and that feels absolutely busted. Remember when you're feeling something use your fingertips, your paws and your palm and run it all the way over slowly and if you you can almost feel it but you don't know where it is look away and rub it and you'll feel it if you go out tomorrow or after this video find a dent on your vehicle rub it then look away and rub it and it amplifies what you can feel come back and comment on the video and just let me know um, anyway it's 10 o'clock it's still raining can you hear the rain it's still raining. It's rained from half seven when I got up, quarter to eight. It's 10 o'clock now, it's still raining. No good for the mental positiveness, but we still must crack on. I am going to leave this here. I need to tuck both of these doors closer to the back of my van. Tomorrow, we're gonna tackle these dents on the swage line. They're there somewhere. And in between that, I need to finish the rest of this door. The rust runs slightly under the lip, so I need to bare metal those, zinc prime them, finesse this little bit on the end because the f rust just goes under the swage line. So I'm gonna have to completely sand that out and then get my swage line back with either a little bit of filler or with a primer. And there's marks everywhere absolutely everywhere so i need to ideally bare metal the whole rim of this door zinc prime it and then two pack prime it all we'll take the handle out tomorrow i'll show you how to do that let's see what tomorrow holds hopefully no rain second evening i've been here all day but we can't film during the day they have the radio on cars in and out let's see what i've been up to we just got that last shot and the battery died and i'm literally hardwired to the top don jump start. Not only does it charge motors, it charges the GoPro. I need to wiggle a few doors around. We've got Grin here. What's happening? What's going on Grin? Right. You've just been looking at this car. I'm yeah. not going to mention what it is just yet. Step back a sec. Check that motor out. Foxy's got it in for paintwork. It's quite nice. It's a bit like a Jag. I don't think, unless some of you know what that car is, you'd ever guess. But I'm not going to keep you in suspense. It's a Kia. Would you have a Kia, Grin? I'd have one of them Kias. Would you, if someone said what motor do you drive, would you tell them? Oh, yeah, GTS, mate. Yeah, because it's what? called a, a GTS. What a Porsche! Yeah, it's, it's, it's called a GTS Stinger, but for a Kia, it's up there. It's yeah. Look, the steering wheel's moving, the seat's moving. Yeah, it's pretty swanky for a Kia, isn't it? Steering wheel's going back down. Anyway, let's see what I've been doing. I need you out in one sec, Brennan. No problem. Door is in primer. Last shot yesterday, we was rubbing that dent down that took three skims, but shh, don't tell anyone. We also got a couple of other little dings, a couple of little dents. I put some etch primer on first, as normal. I did have to prime it outside. There was loads of motors in here. The booth weren't free, so we primed it outside. Then got some two-pack primer on it. And we got a bug, can you see that? Hopefully that should blo block out. That is just in the prime, that was a full blown bug. Oh, buggy. Happy with the rest of the door. I did strip a few more bits down, cleaned a few edges, and where this window rubber sits, it was rusty. And I even said in one of the other shots, you ain't gonna need to weld it, it's just surface rust. Well, there was actually a hole. I had to weld a tiny little hole up there bent a little piece of metal into shape, ground all the back of this off with a die grinder, belt sander, loads of zinc in spray, loads of etch primer, welded a little piece in there, ground it off, and that is it for now. I do need to put a tiny little bit of filler on it, and then a bit more etch primer, a bit more 2K primer. But apart from that, this door is done. Let's have a look at the other door. I did start to rub it down bare metal, and the rust spots were quite bad. So I'll put some Q-Rust on them, and Q-Rust is that stuff. Oh, and I also, 
I did rub down one of my handles. The handle on the T5s, I see it a lot on the Facebook forums, you wear through the plastic or the black coating then they look ropey so I spent 20 minutes tickling it off with some 320. Then a bit of 2k primer and uh, that's where we're up to. I have got some dents to do on the inside of this door and this is a episode about dents so I'm going to flip it over and I found the same dents that are on the inside of this door in the door shuts of said door and I take it people have gone to jump in the motor and slam the door and the seat belt or the clasp has been in the door and they've slammed the door or tried to because there's about five dents there is one of them dents in the driver's side but not as many flip this door over look at the dents and then I need to bare metal some more up to about here and then we're going to check out these dents make use of grin while he's here let's flip some doors and let's get this sander out Tune! But we can't have that. Alexa, off. What? Yeah, you're gonna have to wait, love. I have been sanding. How long does it take to sand? 40 minutes? Yeah. 40 minutes. I have 80 gritted what I needed to. The chips and rust don't go any more than that. We're gonna tackle them dents in a minute, and I am gonna finesse this with a 180 sander, then maybe a 240, then zinc primer. And I did mention that I've put some Q-Rust on the worst of them. Etch Prime over these. I will give them a little tickle with a red scotch. And that is because when the Q-Rust dries, it dries really shiny. And shiny surfaces don't stick. So we, uh, we give it a little key up before we etch prime. The rust does also go underneath. So if we pan round and look at today's door, I have also done the backs ever so carefully bare metal behind there, zinc primer, etch primer. That should stop it and make it last a bit longer. That door's ready for some filler. We've got these dents on the inside. I mentioned in the last shot, someone has been slamming the door. Where's the light? There's the light. There's another one. There's another one. There's one, there's one, there's one. Someone literally slammed the hell out of the door on the seat belt. So we're going to fix those in a minute. I've also been making use of Sam. He's uh, he's bare metal to petrol cap nicely. It was uh, fully rusting around there and this is quite bad. This goes below the fuel flap. Um, some deep marks there. So what I'll do with those, that's actually a little dent there. The rust has actually dented the metal. Strong stuff. I will actually uh, die grind those a bit deeper, bit of Q rust, bit of filler, and it also starts to bulge out there. It's nice and smooth there, and then it bulges a bit. Sam's just been digging at it, and it is corroded behind. So I am going to clean that somehow, and he's dug a load of stuff out. That's what was bulging it out. So I'll clean it out, and we're just going to literally soak that, maybe in anti-rust solution because they are not too easy to get hold of. I repaired the T5 not too long ago and I needed another one. They're not too easy to get. That is bad out of shape. Look at that, Sam. Mm -hmm. There's a bulge there and a bulge there. So I'm going to have to tap that back down, which will dislodge more rust, and then we'll do it. Thanks for doing them, Sam. Mm -hmm. Took a while, didn't they? It did take a while. Imagine doing the whole van. It's taken me a while. Yeah. I've got one door left, but it's going to be worth it. I want it to look right. Get the filler out, let's have a look at these dents, because this is dent episode, not rust. We are all set up and ready. I have lightly gone over the area with a 320, and hopefully you can see in the shot, I've got a Sharpie pen, and I've just ever so slightly put a little black mark in the deepest part of the dent. You don't have to do that, but there's that many. I don't want to miss one, so I've inspected put some uh, a little mark in it now i can swoop straight in and ho also hopefully you can see i don't want any filler in the lock assembly because otherwise you've got to rub it out so i'll put a little bit of tape in there as the filler's going off i can peel the tape off um i am not going to spend as much time doing dents in the shut because literally when this filler goes off, I will just come in here, 
with 120 on the sand art and DA it. Doesn't matter if we rub through the paint outside the dent, like I was mentioning in an earlier shot. I'm just going to come straight in now. I've loaded it up. I'm not going to worry too much about a thin edge, about being able to block it out. I'm just getting it in there. And this one on the end, on the end, well, this one here was quite deep, so I am going to cake it in there. Again, if you were doing this in the outside, you'd want to end up with a thin edge, like that one. Makes it easier to rub out, but on the inside, I'm literally going to come in there, 80 grit on the sander, DA the living snot out of it, and uh, that'll be good enough. Good enough for the girls we date. And the bottom ones, or these lower ones, I'm not going to individually put filler in them. I'm just going to load filler in all of them and join them up. Again, my filler is not going to look too pretty, but it's the inside of the door. A little bit of filler just dropped there then. Rather than leave it there and have to rub that out when it's gone hard, I wiped it off with my finger. Saves so rubbing it off later. And then, because I've got scratch marks in there from rubbing it out, you'd have to then prime that to remove any filler. Call the camera's right in the way. Now, Hopefully, that should get them. I'm going to put dent, uh, put some dents. I bloody hope not. I'm going to put the filler in that other door along the swage line, off camera, and we'll have a butcher's. Mm, hopefully, that's got them all. The same dents corresponding in the same spot were in the door shut, but I've done them. Let me get this filler in before it goes off. Filler went off. I did give it a bit of a heat gun. I know. Right. I did give it a bit of a heat gun. It's chilly. I carefully and lightly went over the filler with 120 on the sander just to knock some of the head off and smooth the filler out. We've got 120 on the block. I'm not pushing hard. In a small area like this, it comes off nicely. I'm going to keep checking it to make sure I'm not taking too much out. I did obviously do a little bit off camera. You don't want to see me stood here for five minutes, but it doesn't take long. And then once I'm done with the 120, or when it's nearly perfect, I'll then go over it with 180. And then maybe by hand, I'll have 243 20 in my hand, and I'll just lightly tickle over it to get even more scratch marks out. And then I'll two pack prime it. I do need to carefully get my edge back because the filler lightly went over the edge where the door card sits. But you might remember in the last shot that I wiped it with my finger. That then makes it easier to tickle the edges off. It is almost there so now i'm swapping to the 180 it's a lot smoother and the reason for going down the grades is because when you put the primer on the primer then sinks into these scratch marks primer takes a long time to properly cure it might go off but it takes a good while to cure so if you end up painting it, your primer that might then keep sinking into these scratch marks and then you'll see the scratch marks through your paint. And we don't want that. I'm going to go around the edges, 320, I'll just give you a quick demo actually. 320 in my hand, I'm just tickling the end off to get a nice round edge again and then I'm going to just lightly go over it. You could have it on the block. I do like a bit of hand sanding. Old school, isn't it? 
hand sanding was all the rage before blocks and BAs were in. That is absolutely mint. You can obviously see where the dents were because you can see the, uh, the Sharpie marks. That's all good. Well, I'm gonna finesse it off camera. But let's have a look at the other door and check out the dents on the swage line. Yeah, happy days. And that was in one skin. Oh yeah. So this is the door. There was an array of dents. There was like one, two, three, four little ones. And again, we've joined the filler up over dents. Rather than putting a little bit of filler, little bit of filler, I've just gone over all four little dents. And with the swage line here, there was one, two, three dents, and then there was a couple of little ones. So rather than little bits, I've just put it over all of it. I'll get the camera on the stand and let's block this down. So when blocking down over a swage line, you need to stay one side or the other. So I'm gonna hold my wrist nice and firm. Start getting floppy wrists, you're gonna lose your line. And what I will do, I'm gonna block the top down, then I'll put a bit of, uh, then I'll put a bit of tape along there and I'll block to it and that will straighten the line and you can see where the old swage line is and then this one's nice and simple, just block it off. But um, the filler's gone on well, so it should knock off well. I've got the bigger block this time. I'm not pushing hard and that front face has already gone. The better you can get your filler in, the easier it is to knock out. I can just about see my black pen marks. So I'm going to stop there for a minute because I do want a 180 at two. I'm not going to tape it up yet, I'm just going to go for it blocking. But keeping my hand nice and sturdy. Do not roll your uh, uh, wrist over that line, you will lose it fast. Now we're on 180 and I am just lightly caressing out my 120 mark. Doesn't look right though. This breakthrough isn't pleasing me right here and I can feel it. That needs another skim. There's something going on here. But, you've seen enough filler work, that is easy enough to rub out. That's just the same as rubbing out the dent on the other door. But I've got a little trick to show you. If you're unsure on your swage line, you want to check that it's right, before you go to the effort of taping it up and priming it with 2K primer to see that your line's all swagey and all over the place, if you want to check it beforehand, I've got just primer here in a rattle can, nice and simply. And I've dusted it over. You probably can't see it in the camera, and for some reason it hasn't worked out amazing. But it's real life. I can see the swage line. The swage line is good, but it does need a bit more filler here. That one needs tickling off. But that is the absolute basics of rubbing down filler. Um, yeah, happy with that. Let's, uh, let me sort this out. I'll sort that door out tomorrow. It's like 10 o'clock at night. Happy with this, really happy with that for one skim. I'm gonna quickly tape it up ready for primer. I'm gonna tape further back than the primer because when you're priming something, you don't wanna get a sharp edge. And if you are gonna get a sharp edge, tape up on, there's a swage line right here. So for instance, I would tape up right on the swage line like that. Reason being, once we've primed it, we'll peel this tape off and there'll be a really sharp edge there. But because the sharp edge is on a swage line, you'll be able to smooth that out easily. If, Let's show you another demonstration. If I had my tape going across there, 
and I primed straight up to this tape. When I peel this tape off tomorrow, when the primer's dry, we're gonna have a really cliff edge. Cliffy, fadonk, fadonk. And to rub a cliff edge out in a straight panel is really hard. What you'll end up doing is, you'll be trying to rub out your sharp line and you'll then end up rubbing away the paint that's next to it. Then you're gonna end up with another little crevasse, another little dent, you'll see it. So when it comes to priming, goddamn phone, when it comes to priming, you need to fade your primer out, i.e. I would tape even further away, down there say, and I will stop here with my primer. That way tomorrow, there's like a faded edge rather than a sharp edge. But if you do need to tape to a sharp edge, tape to a swage line, that way I tickle it off. Um, that is gonna about do it for this video. I've not installed six turbos, two Tesla motors, in fitted an engine, full repaint. It's just an episode on bodywork, on filler work. There have only been small dents, but dents nevertheless. Big dents can be a little bit easier than small dents because you can just load the filler in, DA it, block it out, nice and easy. Small dents, you need to caress them. So, not the most action-packed video, but I just wanted to tell you guys, because some of you ask questions, what's involved in applying filler? How much filler? How to rub it out? What to use? Next video, we're gonna be rubbing down the primer on the side of the T5, because when you've gone to all the effort of doing the dents, then you've primed it, you've waited a couple of days for the primer to go hard, you could then ruin it if you rub the primer down wrong. So, I'll explain in the next video. Um, it's getting late, it's gone 10 o'clock. So, if you've enjoyed the video, found it useful, click the thumbs up, don't forget to subscribe, drop a comment, and I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm out.